We're now going to talk about some elementary potential flows and how to put those in terms of complex potential and velocity. Uh, remember, our complex potential is capital Phi. That's our complex potential. And, uh, and the derivative of, of that with respect to Z is what we call our complex velocity. So W of Z is the derivative of our complex potential with z. And this is what we call our complex velocity. And uh, remember that the real part of, uh, uh, of that complex velocity gives us the, the velocity in the x direction. So that's real part. And then the velocity in the y direction is the negative of the imaginary part of uh, of WZ. Okay, so um, now we've, we've talked about elementary uh, potential flows before and uh, and we found that we could define them in terms of a, um, a velocity potential Uh, or and a stream function psi and uh, and we're now going to combine those because the definition of capital phi is uh, simply phi plus i psi okay so it's the summation of our velocity potential and stream function in this complex form uh, so let's work through a couple of these. Um, uh, let's start off with 2D uniform flow. And, uh, and if we go back, we'll find that the, um, the uh, velocity potential for that is V infinity times X cosine alpha plus Y sine alpha. Uh, plus we'll, we're going to call it c1 um, you can have some constant obviously we're, we take the derivative of this to find um, the velocity and uh, and so that c1 um, drops out but uh, but for correctness we should include a constant there and then the stream function for uniform flow is v infinity times y cosine alpha minus x sine alpha plus C2. Okay, so we're simply going to combine these and uh, get a capital Phi over here. So capital Phi for this is, um, is going to be V infinity. So it's little Phi. So X cosine alpha plus Y sine alpha plus C1. And then we're going to add uh, I times a little psi, which is V infinity times Y cosine alpha minus X sine alpha um, plus C2. Okay, um, so now we're going to combine some like terms here. So uh, for example, I'm going to bring the cosine terms together. We've got cosine terms, sine terms, and then we've got these two constants. So I'm going to uh, uh, rewrite this as, uh, let's see, V infinity times, uh, if we look at the cosine terms, we've got an X plus IY times cosine alpha. Um, and then the sine terms, we've got, um, uh, let's see, plus... Um, this is going to be uh, y minus ix times the sine of alpha. And then uh, we, we have these uh, two constants um, on the end here. So we're going to have plus c1 uh, plus i times c2. Okay, I think I did that right. Um, 
Okay, so now um, we're going to call this a just a complex constant, C1 plus IC2. We're just going to call that C, and that'll just be our complex constant. And, uh, and so we can rewrite this as V infinity uh, X plus IY times cosine alpha plus... And now for this term, I'm going to pull an I out front. Uh, so it's going to be I y over i um, minus x and i'm also going to multiply the first term here by i over i so i've got an i squared um, like that we've got sine alpha plus and then we've got our our constant here c okay so let's uh simplify this v infinity x plus i y cosine alpha uh, plus now uh, this is going to be i times uh, we've got an i squared in the denominator that's just negative one so minus i y minus x and i'm actually just going to rewrite that i'm going to pull a negative out front and write that uh, let's see i need to make this into a negative Pull that out front, and what we'll get is uh, x plus i y inside there, sine alpha plus c, and now uh, for, by definition z is equal to x plus i y, so we can plug that in, and we get v infinity, uh, excuse me, v infinity uh, z cosine alpha minus uh, i z sine alpha plus c okay so this is what we get for capital phi uh, so that's capital phi and then we can take the derivative of phi to get w so w of z is the derivative of phi with respect to z and uh, so what that gives us is uh, V infinity times derivative of that first term is just cosine alpha. And then the second term is minus I sine alpha and the C uh, drops out. So this is our uh, complex uh, potential and complex velocity for 2D uniform flow. Okay, so let's uh, let's walk through one more example here, and that is for a 2D source flow. Um, and I'm, I'm going to walk through this because this is in polar coordinates, so it just shows you a different way of walking through this. But um, for 2D source flow, uh, phi is defined as uh, lambda over 2 pi times the natural log of r plus c1, there's our constant again, and psi is uh, lambda over 2 pi theta plus c2. So that's our, our velocity potential and our stream function. We're going to add those two together to get capital phi, remember, is simply little phi plus i psi. And so we can just plug those in, so we get lambda over 2 pi uh, natural log of r plus c1, and then plus uh, i times lambda over 2 pi theta, and plus i times c2. Okay, so you can see our uh, complex constant here showing up again. So that's going to be c, and so we can, uh, we can bring lambda over 2 pi out front, and we'll get... Um, natural log of r uh, plus i theta um, plus c. Okay, um, so now uh, let's uh, keep simplifying this. So we got lambda over 2 pi natural log of r. And for the second term, I'm going to say that, um, that uh, I can write that as the natural log of e to the i theta. Okay, natural log and e cancel, but um, 
but we want to write it in that form so we can combine it with the first term. So now we've got a natural log of r uh, in this first term and a, and a natural log of e to the i theta. And so we can combine those into um, natural log of um, r e to the i theta plus c. And uh, by definition, r e to the i theta is equal to z. So z is uh, x plus i y, which is equivalent in uh, polar coordinates to r e to the i theta. Okay, so we can just plug in z there, and now I've got lambda over 2 pi natural log of z plus c. And so that's our, our capital phi. And then uh, the derivative of that, d phi dz, is, uh, is our complex velocity, w of z, which uh, if we take the derivative of that uh, of uh, capital phi there, we just get lambda over 2 pi z. The nat natural log of z, the derivative of that is just 1 over z, and then the constant disappears. So, uh, so again, uh, now we have a complex potential and a complex velocity for 2D source flow. And I'm just going to write down the solutions for a couple, um, for a couple other uh, uh, flows. So we've got uh, 2D vortex flow. And uh, so the little phi for that is minus lambda over 2 pi theta plus c1. And little psi is, uh, excuse me, not lambda, gamma. Gamma over 2 pi times the natural log of r plus c2. So you can see this is very similar to the previous example. So we can walk through that. Uh, and I won't go through the math. Um, I'll just show you what the answer is here, though. But capital phi of z then, uh, what we get is i times uh, gamma over 2 pi natural log of z plus c. And for uh, w of z, which is our complex velocity, we get um, i times gamma over 2 pi z. Okay, and then uh, we've also got 2D doublet flow. So 2D doublet flow um, uh, is, uh, let's see, so little phi is a kappa over 2 pi times cosine theta over r. And little psi is, um, let's see, negative kappa over 2 pi sine theta over r. Uh, and I forgot the c. So we've got plus c1 and plus c2. Um, and so those can be combined into a capital phi of kappa over 2 pi 1 over z plus c, our complex uh, constant. And then uh, our complex velocity, w of z, is minus kappa over 2 pi 1 over z squared. Okay, so um, so those are several uh, elementary potential flow functions that then we can combine in different forms to get uh, uh, to to get different flow patterns and and to produce uh, different flow fields.